I found the culprit. But I'll tell you about that a little later in the video. First, this video was about the seedlings that there was no more room in the grow room. Welcome back to Ecocentric Homestead. I separated the seedlings and put them in the red solo cups, eight ounces. Pepper plants, <laughs> poor little pepper plants, their leaves are so straggly. This pepper is coming along though. They say you should have them in a one to two gallon pot or an eight to ten inch um, planter. This is a six inch planter. I think I want to grow the ones I'm growing as perennials, grow them in something this size, which this is a ten inch uh, pot that you get from the nurseries with those little trees in. And notice I have some capillary mat material hanging out from there. I've got some projects to use that. I have my potting mix, proper potting mix that I purchased, pre-moistened here. You'll need to pre-moisten your potting mix, especially if you're wanting to bottom water it because otherwise it'll never soak up. But if you have it pre-moistened, then you can bottom water it and from that point it will always run up the into the soil by capillary action. Now this is a fat and sassy pepper. It's been in here quite a while. And I can see roots on the bottom. Quite a few roots, but in no ways is a root bound. My experiment with the vermiculite and the aphids, I think it helped while the vermiculite was still dry, but now that it's getting well soaked, it uh, doesn't uh, seem to be helping. Maybe a little bit, but not much. But I still want to put the layer of vermiculite there anyway, because once this gets wet, it acts as a very good mulch to retain moisture in your soil. And you just need a little skim, like an eighth of an inch or something, and it will greatly reduce the evaporation from the soil surface. Now where am I going to put this guy? I'll show you. Because these lights are longer than the shelf, I put them right to the edge of the shelf on the one end, I have this overhang here. Third time to charm, we'll try this again. I'm trying to get a platform set up here to put that pepper on. It's dirty so far. 
cut the capillary mat pieces down there. Now, the pepper has room to grow from the lights. This pie plate takes a half jug of water just under. And as long as there's water down here, this piece of capillary mat will wick it up into the soil and the soil will remain moist for the pepper. And that's where that one's going to grow for a while anyway. The next thing I want to do today is plant up these into cups. I only have the two shelves for starting seeds and I'm going to want to start a lot of seeds this year because I'm going to grow as much food as I possibly can. I am going to pull up my diagram here of what I got. This is seed starting tray A. So here's my brand new wine tomatoes. They're coming along nicely. Now tomatoes I like to plant up uh, once or twice anyway because you can plant them nice and deep and then they send the roots along their uh, stem as you know and then you get a better uh, a stronger plant so right now I just have the roots that's in here when I put them in the cup I will bury them right to the leaves and then I will have that much more roots and then they'll grow up fairly tall and I'll bury them nice and deep again so that when they're in the five gallon bucket they're not very far off the bottom of the bucket. And next row I have three dwarf green curled kale. There is a Romanesco broccoli, five Arcadia broccoli, blue curled kale, six Long Island Brussels sprouts, five Swiss chard, five kohlrabi, early white Vienna, six Cimarron lettuce, and five prize ed lettuce. So when I put in the tomato, I just put in enough in the base. See, even one handful is too much. So that the leaves are just barely at the top like that. Here's a weak one. I'm going to nip out that one. And nip out that one so that I have only one tomato plant in this cup. There you are, buried right to the leaves. This is a brand new wine, as I said. I'm going to try eventually putting a couple of these out in the garden and see what they do because they are a really old uh, variety. Hmm. Never know, they might have some genetics that will survive in my climate. The rest of these are probably bury the, uh, some of these that are leggy a little deeper. But that's all. I'm going to show you this St. John's wart again. Because he is finally coming along. You see the root hanging out the bottom. And uh, he's starting to grow. Got a few leaves on them now. I may or may not divide the lettuce. I'm going to see once I get them out. In putting them in the cups, I can just... Let's try that right now.
I have several plants here in the one container. Now if I take this, just take my knife and slice it open like that. Take one plug and that'll be a second one. Now to do this, of course, I fill up the cup and I make a hole in the center. I have a wheat plant here that I'm going to pull out. If I do that with everyone, then instead of having six simmering lettuce, I'll have twelve. Um, let's see what else I'm going to do here. This is the broccoli Arcadia, and it's three beautiful plants. If I cut that open. Make the hole in the center. Ease them apart gently, breaking as few roots as possible. And I'll bury them deeper as well. That way, there's less of a chance of the root zone drying out. And if I do that, I've got quite a few uh, broccoli and any other plant down here. So I will finish that off and come back show you the result. The lettuces seem to be taking quite a while to perk up but I don't think they're dead. They're just taking a long time. I brought them here and I top watered everything so I made sure the soil was soaked and I end up with this is the prize ed lettuce we've got 13 of those here is the brand new wine tomato there's 10 of those the broccoli arcadia there's 10 of those now this is the Cimarron lettuce which is a very nice leaf lettuce 19 I have there like I said, they're, they're taking their sweet time to perk up. And this one is the Corabi Early White Vienna. Now, I said when I was planting these that I was only going to plant a few because the planting schedule that I got suggested planting these inside. Now, the rest will be planted outside, but I have these four for an experiment to see what the difference is. For location, here's my a uh, large planter. On the other side from the planter, sea berry is there. Uh, these are, you got a broccoli Romanesco and kale blue curled scotch this year. Uh, the Romanesco broccoli, let's see, dwarf green curled kale. And they're planted all along here, or positioned all along here. <laughs> and now you'll see something cute. You don't get to see this stuff in uh, Newfoundland in April. This is the uh, Dill Atlantic Giant that I've been saving just for fun. Another one there. I had one wheat plant. This is the, what I said here earlier. And uh, Cimarron lettuce. That's Cimarron lettuce right there. Very tasty, nice leaf lettuce. And here's the last of them. I put them down here. 
some more uh, blue crow scotch and brock the arcadia rearranged things here and was able to fit the last few in on this shelf now after I took everything out, uh, separated, put it in the solo cups, put the cups upstairs, I came back and rearranged all three of my trays. The ones that were still, I didn't think they were big enough to put in a larger plant, a planter, I fit in less than one tray. I have three rows, three full rows here, plus four other spaces to uh, add. So this can go back up under the lights, just like it is. So what I've done here, down in these back few rows, these are all the peat pellets that I had planted seed in. They're good uh, seed that was planted in there, but of course you don't get everything to germinate. So what I want to do is reseed these with exactly what was in there before. Now I have the diagrams, I think I showed you before, uh, done in Microsoft Word. So I know each pellet, what was planted in that pellet, so I can replant the same thing. Up in the top end there, those first two rows was the, the lettuce seed. It, there's three or four of them germinated, but I'm going to say forget it, chuck that seed. And the next two rows were Southport onions. Once again, three germinated there. I'm going to forget that. I can replant these with something else, just so long as it's not lettuce or onion, because if I plant lettuce or onion in it, if something germinates, then how can I be sure that it's not the old seed from what I had planted before? And so these cups and everything up here, I can plant whatever I want. And these down here, like I said, I'll be replanting with exactly what was planted in them before. I don't like peat pellets. This tray, this is tray A. It just has an insert with a hole in it, in each one. The tray itself is the regular tray with these ribs going down it. So you can put that a insert like that in it and if I pour water into any one section it will go underneath everything, flow along, and come up beneath all of the pea pellets or cups, whichever I have in there. Fine and dandy. When I used this one last year, I really wasn't pissed off with it because, like I said, the water can flow underneath, and it worked okay. And then they changed it. flat bottom like this and they put each peat pellet in there when the peat pellets swell up it completely fills out those sections so then even though they have the channel for the water to run down when the pellet swells up you pour the water in one end the pellet is blocking it and so you get soaked pellets on the end that you we're watering and no water gets down to the far end. So that was a very poor move on their part. I can however still use this with my little cups because the cup don't fill out the full space. And therefore when I water in one end the water will just run around the cups all the way down. So the trays will be kept, peat pellets will not be used. I just, I'm just i using those and I have a few more of a different size that I'm going to use up, but I will not be buying peat pellets again. 
And as for that culprit that I mentioned, I started a new tray, tray D. These plants down here are doing some research. Uh, and I found out that mustard, there is a mustard that grows as a weed here in Newfoundland. Hmm, if there's mustard grows as, as a weed, I should be able to grow mustard in my garden. But I didn't want to make another seed order. But I thought, you have mustard seed in your uh, spice cabinet. So that's what this is. I just went to the spice cabinet and took some mustard seed and planted there and they seem to be growing quite fine. Now, I didn't have any room left under my lights. I had this laid down on the floor. And when I picked it up the next morning, those sow bugs, carpenters, pill bugs, whatever name you put on them, crawled out from underneath. They had eat off every one. I had put lettuce seed in here. And they ate every seedling that was there. These were a couple of bigger seedlings. And they're still growing. But everything else is basically dead. Up in the sunroom, they can get up there and hide underneath those trays I have there because the trays are right on the floor so they have a constant moist atmosphere. That's what I have to fix. I'm going to have to put something there to raise the tray just a little bit so that the uh, soul bugs don't have a place to hide away up there. Everything is rearranged now. I have this tray set out with this style of planters. It's actually in two sections, so 32 one inch square cells, two times, that's 72. I have another one section, and then I have the trays that I can actually put the cups in, which, not next week, but the week after, is when seed starting uh, starts in earnest here for most seeds coal crops, lettuce and that kind of stuff will be planted out on the 9th, starting on the 9th of May, I believe. So the gardening season is ramping up uh, full speed ahead now. And this is one of the first of many more frequent videos. From here until October, there will be a lot to show and videos will be coming out quite a lot more frequent. So if you enjoy them, give me a thumbs up. And as always, make sure you leave a comment of your thoughts and opinion. If you want to follow the building of a food forest and vegetable garden for self-reliance in a Zone 5 boreal forest, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.